Hello and welcome back. I just wanted to give you an update on some of the books that I've been reading this month so far. Now, March has come far too quickly. February absolutely rushed by. I know February's short anyway, but January rushed by and January's not short, so we're already in March in 2024. It doesn't even feel like it's 2024 yet. But anyway, let's talk about what I've been reading so far. So this month I um, had quite a decent reading month, I think. There's one book that I can't really show you because I've literally just finished the audiobook, so I am gonna have to buy the physical book to get that in there, but I'll talk about that at the end. So the first one is The Gin's Apple by Jamila Morani. Now this book I was kindly sent by a blog tour company as they wanted me to be part of said blog tour. The book itself is about a young girl called Nardine who when she's younger her family are killed right in front of her. She manages to luckily escape. Basically there's a ransack at the house. I've described that awfully. There's a ransack at the house. Some people come in, they kill her family. She escapes and then the book's about her avenging her family throughout the rest of her life. She does different things to help her get there without spoiling the plot. I didn't rate it, unfortunately. I didn't think it was that great and being part of a blog tour was really awkward. So I was part of a Twitter conversation, a big DM group that everybody was talking about and a lot of people were rating it really highly and sometimes I feel like people maybe just do that because they're part of the blog tour. I don't know. Fair enough if you did enjoy it. I just didn't find it that great. I think two of its biggest detriments are the fact that it's short the reason I think it's short is because it's set as a YA, so a young adult, so I don't think it's actually meant to be for maybe me as an audience, but that detriment meant that you couldn't fit a lot of plot in. There is a romance in here which peters out incredibly quickly because it doesn't get started until quite late, and then essentially you realise in the plot that it can't happen, I don't want to tell you why, but then that just kind of peters out, so that felt a bit useless. Nardine herself as a character is fine, She's quite bulky, she's quite brave, she's quite strong, she's independent, I do like that. It doesn't really go into the boundary, sometimes you get these strong characters where they just end up being stubborn, they just end up being rude, I don't like that. That doesn't happen here, which is nice, but she's not funny, she doesn't have a sense of humour, she's not light-hearted enough, and unfortunately that for me is an important part of making me enjoy a character. I need to see their full range of emotions, I need to see their full range of personality. So I couldn't really approach, I couldn't really get to know Nardine that well. I didn't really get that attached to her either, unfortunately. But as I said, the plot kind of sweeps over. I think it kind of starts when she's younger and then it grows into when she's older and you find yourself building with her into a woman who is much stronger than when she was young and when she was quite weak and scared. That's interesting. That's probably the only interesting element of it. I didn't think it was that great, unfortunately. I gave it a four out of five on my blog, which I think was probably a little generous. Maybe I fell into the trap of, this is a blog tour. I don't want to say anything too bad about it. But that's The Gin's Apple by Jamila Morani. If you're into books about women doing well, about women during a time when this was essentially set during a time in a country, especially when women aren't meant to do well. She does well. I love that. If you're into that, you might like this. If you want something a bit shorter, you might like this. But other than that, I couldn't say I enjoyed it, which is a shame because I was really looking forward to it. Great front cover, nice premise, and obviously it's a lot easier for me if I enjoy a book that people send me. Luckily, the next book I read, A Gentleman in Moscow by Amore Tolls, Tals, don't quite know how to say it, was much better. This was fantastic. This, again, I listened to mostly on audiobook. The Gin's Apple I read physically. This I listened to mostly on audiobook, but I adored it. It's completely different to what I thought it was going to be about. I thought this was going to be some sort of political, sweeping story over Russia. However, about some man who's a count and he's a gentleman and I don't know, he's a politician, something like that. It's not. It's about a count who is essentially put on house arrest in the Metro Hotel Metropole in Moscow as a result of something he once did. He can go out, he can go get his hair cut, he can do things like this, but essentially he has to live at the Metropole. He's a man of a high class, he's a gentleman. He knows all the manners, he knows all the rules, he knows all the etiquette that you need to be to be a gentleman. Therefore, when he meets people along the way, he's fascinated by how different, how people have different levels of etiquette and understanding of this. He meets people who have absolutely none. He meets people who are very young, who have a high level of etiquette understanding, and it's fascinating for him, and it's fascinating for us as a reader. Now, the reason I love this is because Count Alexander Rostov is lovely. I was expecting to be a bit abrasive, a bit rude, you know, kind of politician, a bit 
opinionated, but he's not. He's very open to everybody's opinions. He makes friends easily. He speaks to young people, which is a big part of the book in a way that isn't patronizing. He likes to listen to them. Luckily, the young people he speaks to are kind of intelligent and can speak well. Otherwise, it may frustrate him, I don't know. But it really, really makes you like the Count in a way that I really, really was not expecting to. The story itself, as I said, covers, I think, over about 20, 30 years. His time in the Hotel Montropole, the people he meets, the friends he makes, the friends he loses, the stories he hears these people speak about. And it really, really was a fantastic story to read based on the stories he hears from other people and he gets involved in. You'd argue he lived a fantastic life in this kind of hotel. He met some fantastic people, as I said, that end up being people that he will never forget for the rest of his life. And it really, really was. It was heartwarming, which is a story, as I said, that I was not expecting it to be at all. Really, really shocked me this. Now, Amor Toll's writing is stunning. It really, really is stunning. Another element of this book that I wasn't expecting was it for it to have humour kind of inlaid in it. Now, Amor's ability, or Tolls, you should surname an author sometimes, I think, has the ability to write in such a very formal way, but in a way that also makes it very relatable because there's a lot of humour involved. He sat has a very dry sense of humour, which you feel is kind of the Count's opinion, the Count's formal etiquette being inlaid with a sense of humour, which I absolutely loved. And it made me laugh more than when books try and make you laugh with obvious comedy. It's the Count's misgivings and the Count's humorous ideas on people and opinions on people that make you laugh and the way that other characters may do things that aren't the way that the Count would do. It's difficult to explain without ruining plot. I know I'm not explaining it well, but it really, really was fantastic. And I picked this up just because I borrowed it on Libby or I think I maybe have got it on audio, Audible. I needed the next audiobook to listen to because of work. I like to always have an audiobook to listen to on my lunch breaks and I've just finished one. Picked it up and as I said, I was not expecting to enjoy it as much as I did. I've not yet reviewed this on my blog because I'm catching up with a lot of reviews at the moment. But I think I would probably have given this a 4.5 out of 5, not quite a 4.75. It's not one of my favourite books of all time. It's not that top tier, but it was utterly brilliant and I loved pretty much every moment I read of this and I hope there's even more stories that I need to look into for Immortals and whether this is kind of his genre now, this kind of formal writing, fun character sort of thing, I think it really really impressed me and I would definitely definitely recommend that. Then the final book on my list that uh, is going to be a bit tricky to kind of show you because as I said I don't have any physical copy of it, I borrowed the audiobook from Libby which I've now returned so I can't even show you that, but it was and then there were none by Agatha Christie. Now I don't know if you're just seeing a ring light -like reflection here in the iPad, I'll have a look in post edit, but essentially it was Agatha Christie's and then there were none. This is my first Agatha Christie book, this is the first book by her that I've ever read, which not only is blasphemous as an avid book reader, but it's blasphemous because my mum was a massive Agatha Christie fan, to the point where she had bookshelves lined with Agatha Christie novels. Really, really interesting. That's Agatha Christie herself, I think. This is the book. <laughs> trying to show it on Amazon. It is a really, really fantastic book. It's one of the classics, and we I recently watched the adaptation of the BBC with my partner and she said, oh, it's so cliche, it's so predictable. And then it wasn't predictable, but throughout the whole thing, I felt like saying, oh, yes, but this woman invented that cliche. She invented that predictability. The reason so many books have gone on to copy this and use it as a formula is because she invented it. So essentially within this, she was not, then there were none. If you don't know the plot, which mind blowing, but you may not because you may be new to books. 10 people of different backgrounds, different areas are invited to an island a remote island that can only be accessed by boat. Then essentially what happens is they're kind of a bit suspicious as to why they've been uh, invited. They think they've been invited by a couple called the Owens. Then one by one they're killed off. It's never obvious in the book who's doing the killing because that's the point. They just end up being dead. Along the way there's this kind of poem that goes throughout about ten little soldiers. What they find out is that the ten little soldiers poem is how each death is being enacted. So the poem itself kind of says this person died in this way and that's how the ninth person for example dies in the book. It's brilliant, it's really really clever, there's a twist at the end that you don't really work out. Was I blown away by the twist? I don't think so. Essentially what happens is they all end up dying and then you find out what happens at the very very end and who it was at the very very end. It's very well done, it's very tense, it pays a massive homage to crime itself. It is the homage that people are paying to I guess but 
really, really impressed, and it's definitely not going to be my last Agatha Christie, but it's so bad that this is my first Agatha Christie book that I've ever read. I don't think I've ever even picked another one up. I've seen the Hercule Poirot's, I've seen your Miss Marple books, and I've seen some of the old uh, TV series even, and I've seen some of the newer films, Death on the Nile, all these sort of things, with Kenneth Branagh in them, but other than that, I've never really actually read an Agatha Christie. Really, really impressed by that, absolutely loved that. We'll definitely be picking up more of her work. Recommend me some Agatha, other Agatha Christie, because I have not, I don't think that, and then there were none, I think is the best selling crime novel of all time, but I think she has some others that people would recommend over it, some others that are really, really clever. Let me know down below which ones you've read. And they're the three books that I've been reading in March so far. What have you been reading? I'd love to know what you've been reading. This whole video is a standing up video. Usually I do my YouTube sat down, but this one I stood up. So I'm now gonna go and sit down and actually have some blogging to do. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a comment. As always, make sure you like, and if you're not yet subscribed, subscribe. I'm working my way up to that thousand subscriber mark. If you've not yet checked out, checked out any of my other videos, go and have a check out of those as well. There's not a vast amount of them, but you may find some great book recommendations in there as well. But yeah, thank you for watching and goodbye. Thank you.